events planned to celebrate the anniversary of the LA Aqueduct, including a reenactment involving 100 mules walking 240 miles along the LA Aqueduct. The mules actually began the walk mid-October and will be coming through to the LA area on Veterans Day. GMO is an acronym that's becoming more and more known as discussions about how our food source is grown gains more traction with consumers. Now Los Angeles is weighing in on the conversation over genetically modified organisms and what it's saying is no to GMOs. Make Los Angeles GMO free. That's the battle cry at this gathering outside City Hall. We don't know what the effects are. We, and and we, we would prefer to continue with growing our foods naturally as we've done for thousands of years. And leading the charge are council members Paul Coretz and Mitch O'Farrell, who have introduced a motion asking the city council to make it illegal to grow genetically modified foods in Los Angeles. Throughout the history of food, as diseases have arisen and wiped out certain crops, it was biodiversity that saved us. If we ban GMO crops from being grown in Los Angeles, we can preserve this biodiversity. Genetically modified organisms are crops that have had their DNA altered by genetic engineering. Proponents of GMO say genetic modification can protect crops against insects and the weather. Council members Coretz and O'Farrell acknowledge banning GMOs in Los Angeles is mostly symbolic because GMO seeds are used mainly by large farms, of which LA has none. But anti-GMO advocates say motions like this one help protect local gardens and homegrown food from contamination. Genetically modified crops infest other crops with genetically modified pollen, making a non-GMO a GMO. This is done without consent or the knowledge of the grower. Another reason to be concerned about GMOs, advocates say, is the worldwide disappearance of honeybees, also known as colony collapse disorder. In California alone, We've lost 50% of our honeybees last year. There's a lot of suspicion the colony collapse is caused by pesticides and herbicides associated with GMO crops. While the ban may seem by some as a very LA thing to do, in fact, the GMO free movement is an international one. The European continent has largely banned GMO seeds and nations around the world on the African continent, Asia, Latin America have banned the seeds and banned uh, genetically modified foods from entering into their into their countries. City leaders say as the second largest city in the United States and one that often sets trends, it's time to step up and lead the way. The impact of the housing meltdown is still being felt in L.A. Many people are having trouble paying their mortgages and may have already been threatened with foreclosure, but several community groups may be able to help. Yana Kay has more. Okay. Homeowners Cherobi and Israel Gar and their four kids have lived in their home since 2008. But ever since missing two mortgage payments earlier this year, the bank began foreclosure proceedings, leaving the couple no choice but to start preparing their oldest son for what may come next. When you're supposed to be secure and providing stable environment for him, it feels like you've let him down in a sense. At first, their bank tried to modify their mortgage. Then they got a foreclosure letter even after they sent in money to cover the missed payments. The bank refused their payment and sent the money back. We've been bullied by the banks. The banks really need us banking. So they reached out for help and called the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, or ACE, and the California Consumer Justice Coalition. These organizations provide lawyers and housing counselors, but homeowners need to take the first step and call. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti showed his support for ACE at the GARS home. Usually there's an advocate that'll get on the phone with you and actually then call your bank together, so it's not just you by yourself. And what they will do is engage usually with a volunteer banker or somebody else who knows how mortgages work, who can help you um, navigate through that and save the home. So it's not just to give you information and say good luck, it's actually to resolve it. Now one thing to keep in mind is that all of these community-based services are free of charge. So if you're having trouble keeping up with your mortgage payments, it's a good idea to give him a call. I'm Yana Kay for LA This Week. As best we know, the guards were still waiting to hear from the bank to see if they qualify for a modification. If you need help with the foreclosure situation, you can call the hotline at the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. That number is 1-877-881-0878. 
Over the past few years, Boyle Heights has seen $2 billion in public improvements. The work is continuing, this time in the form of new sidewalks. Anita Bennett reports. First Street in Boyle Heights is getting a major makeover. In the latest of a series of ongoing improvements, City Councilman Jose Wezar recently joined local business leaders and artists to break ground on a $12 million sidewalk improvement project. Councilman Wezar, who represents this neighborhood, says the upgrades are meant to make it easier to get to and from the Metro East Side Gold Line. We have plans to uh, redo uh, all the sidewalks and uh, put in more benches, uh, more bike friendly uh, usage of the streets. That means new green bike lanes, street lights, decorative sidewalks, and benches for residents to relax. You can see the changes here in yellow on these project renderings. While this project is expected to make a huge difference for the neighborhood over the long haul, in the short term, some business owners say they're taking a hit. Like before it's good, but now like two weeks ago, almost two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like maybe slow, no people around here. But I hope like to after done better. Okay. Call it all customer come back this way. The manager of this Mexican restaurant says she's also seen business slow down, especially among her disabled customers. Unfortunately, in our parking area we have steps, mm -hmm. and uh, they can't come in. And here, of course, it's make a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. To come. Despite these temporary inconveniences, Councilman Wezar promises the changes will make a big difference in the long run. For the residents, it means a cleaner, safer neighborhood. It means that you could walk down and feel proud of your neighborhood. Uh, it means that you are no longer have dangerous sidewalks. It means that you're going to encourage more pedestrian activity. And that's expected to eventually add up to improved fortunes. In Boyle Heights, I'm Anita Bennett for LA This Week. Men and women in our fire department who go above and beyond the call of duty are recognized for their heroic acts. Rasha Goel takes us to an award ceremony honoring them. Jesse Franco is among the 40 Los Angeles Fire Department firefighters and paramedics to be honored at the Los Angeles Fire Department Awards Luncheon in Hollywood. And while he received one of the highest honors, the Medal of Valor, for saving two engineers during the Metrolink train crash in Chatsworth in 2008, he says, for him, it's all part of the job. It's very humbling, and it's an honor to have it and wear it. And uh, doesn't change your, the way you do your job or people look at you. These awards are a presentation of the department's highest honors and recognize Los Angeles Fire Department heroes for their bravery and courage. Each one of you is doing something that we are grateful for. And I want you to know that your mayor is fully behind you, that your mayor believes that the work that you do when you put on your uniform and when you head out on those calls is something that we are right there alongside you. And the honorees receive not only recognition, but the support of their colleagues. It is an amazing feeling when you sit back and you watch those individuals and you hear those heartwarming stories and the tragedy that they uh, that they were faced with and the actions that they took under those cons just incredible situations. It may be one day of recognition, but it's work that's impacted many lives. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. The award luncheon was presented in conjunction with the Los Angeles Fire Department Foundation, an organization that helps provide funding for the LAFD to support needs not met by the city budget. And the LAFD recently received a generous gift from another source for the purchase of equipment also not met by the city budget. As Yana Kay explains, what they purchased were chairs, but not any old chair. Los Angeles firefighters demonstrate a rescue scene, but instead of carrying the victim to safety, firefighters are using the specially designed evacuation chair, which can transport patients up to 500 pounds safely and quickly. They are a magnificent tool that is lovingly called the back saver, and they enable firefighters and paramedics to move people down stairways and steep hills, any place where a gurney or a regular wheelchair might not work. LA Fire Department officials held a press event at City Hall recently 
recently to thank its community partner, Cedar Sinai Medical Center, for giving a $146,000 donation to the LAFD Foundation to purchase the chairs. Cedar Sinai is interested in protecting people throughout Los Angeles, and this particular device not only helps patients when they're being, uh, you know, transported before they're transported, but also really helps the firefighters themselves. Outgoing LAFD Chief Brian Cummings said that not only will the chairs help victims, but they will also help protect firefighters from common injuries during evacuations. Every year, many of our members are injured. They receive back injuries from carrying patients down narrow and steep stairways. Officials say it is critical that there is a system in place which supports and protects the entire community. I'm Yana Kay for LA This Week. The $146,000 donation paid for the purchase of 73 of the back saver chairs. Mayor Eric Garcetti hopes to jumpstart LA's manufacturing industry by changing the way related classes are taught in schools. As Gil Reyes reports, the mayor pitched his plan at an industry trade show at the LA Convention Center. This device called a flow water jet cuts any surface into any shape you want to make virtually anything from vehicle parts to logos. But any way you slice it, LA's manufacturing industry has experienced a slump. Many businesses have left California because it's too expensive to be here. They certainly get a lot more tax credits and stuff by moving out of state. And I know some cabinet shops, some other manufacturing businesses that have just recently done that just because of the cost of doing business here. Also, many of the manufacturing jobs we do have are in emerging high-tech fields. Many job seekers haven't received the proper training to fill them. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti wants to change this. At this West Deck Manufacturing Conference in downtown, Los Angeles, the mayor pitched plans to consolidate skills training between the high schools, the community colleges, and the trade schools, a unification that would result in one-stop shopping for job seekers. Where somebody can fill out an application and say, I want to be an aviation mechanic and know about two or three programs without having to hunt each one out. But I also want to plant the seeds early on to get the skills in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math education. Garcetti says LA and the nation are ready to dominate the industry again with rising fuel and labor costs plaguing China, our main competitor. The vice president of Flow Water Jets says LA also needs to be more business friendly. Well, Mayor, I would tell you I've been at this show for 30 years here with the company and we've seen in the last maybe it's been seven or eight years a dwindling down of, of the attendance of the show. So do what you can to, to give some tax incentives for businesses to stay in, in California and in this to etch out more winning teams in L.A.'s business sector. In downtown L.A., Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Though manufacturing jobs have declined in Los Angeles, the city still ranks third in the nation for manufacturing employment. Only New York and Houston rank higher. L.A. takes a stand to ensure the well-being of elephants. Police raise awareness on Craigslist scams. Also, the LADWP is making it even easier to conserve water on your lawn. These stories and more in City Beat. The L.A. City Council has approved a motion introduced by Council Members Paul Koretz and Mitch O'Farrell to ban the use of bull hooks, a tool to control the behavior of elephants that contains a sharp metal hook and spiked tip. The Los Angeles Zoo stopped using bull hooks in 2010, but the city never officially banned bull hooks until now. Since most traveling circuses still use bull hooks, it's likely this ban will also mean a de facto ban on circuses coming into Los Angeles. Animal rights activists say bull hooks can cause trauma and injuries to elephants. The city's Board of Public Works Commissioners has adopted a Bureau of Street Services recommendation that will allow Los Angeles residents to plant and maintain edible landscapes in the parkways in front of their properties without needing to obtain a permit. That means in addition to shrub and ground cover plant materials, residents will also be able to plant fruit or nut-bearing trees on that strip of grass. The Bureau of Street Services will be providing the public an expanded list of approved trees in the coming days. The City Council still has to approve the recommendation. The LAPD is warning residents about criminals who use Craigslist, the popular online classified ad website, to scam trusting individuals. Police recommend dealing with folks you can meet in a public space like a police station when you're planning to purchase
purchase or sell something and never wire funds via money wiring services and do not rent housing or purchase goods without seeing them for yourself. Mayor Eric Garcetti provided opening remarks at the Council for Watershed Health State of the Los Angeles River Symposium. The symposium was held at the LAPD headquarters. The Council for Watershed Health is committed to projects like capturing and using stormwater effectively, revitalizing rivers, and restoring native habitats. Mayor Garcetti praised measures like the Prop O stormwater bond for helping to clean up LA's rivers and public spaces. You can already see what it's done in places like Echo Park Lake where we're able to rebeautify part of our urban landscape at the same time doing the right thing for our waters. The mayor says since the passage of Prop O, the LA River has seen a 90% decrease in trash thanks to storm drain inserts and other efforts. Palms neighborhood doesn't have a lot of green space, but the one park it does have is about to go from drab to fab. Yana Kay has more. For this little boy, this is the last time he'll be playing in this dirty and dilapidated playground at Woodbine Park. That's because this park in the Palms neighborhood is about to get a much needed makeover. I have a licensed in home daycare and bringing the children here once it's uh properly, you know, it's clean and presentable, it would be beautiful. City and local officials gathered for the groundbreaking and the official announcement of what is to come at Woodbine Park. That's what we want to be about. We don't want to just go in and make improvements for the sake of making improvements. We want to make sure those improvements are addressing the needs of the community. Some of the upgrades will include new fencing, benches, and bike racks. The basketball court, picnic areas, and play areas will also be renovated. More landscaping will be added, as well as energy-efficient LED lights. Right now we have this one park, and so we wanted to make it a great park. And this is a great community effort and planning it and moving forward with it and funding it. Uh, so so I'm so excited to be here at this groundbreaking. The Palms community worked with the neighborhood council for more than three years to come up with a plan and find the funding to renovate the park. Officials will be shutting down the park to begin renovations, which should take about three months. I'm Yana Kay for LA This Week. In this week's list of things to do, an advanced Griffith Park hike, a Day of the Dead celebration downtown, and learning to play the ukulele. Ranger Ernie Ibarra will be leading a hike on Saturday, November 2nd at Griffith Park. Meet at 8 a.m. at the Griffith Park Ranger Station Visitor Center, located at 4730 Crystal Springs Drive. The seven-mile hike to Hogback Trail will be an advanced one and will conclude at around noon. Hikes are always canceled in the event of rain. For more information, you can email Ranger Ernie at ernie.ibarra at lacity.org. On Saturday, November 2nd, from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., celebrate downtown Dia de los Muertos at Grand Park, located at 200 North Grand Avenue. It's a way to honor the dead with colorful altars, which will be on display. There will also be food trucks, free face painting, and music for the whole family to enjoy. Go to grandparkla.org for details. If you've ever wanted to learn how to play the ukulele, head on over to the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, or J. ACCC in Little Tokyo on Sunday, November 3rd. Lead instructor Jason Arimoto will be teaching an intermediate and then a beginner's class from 1 to 4 p.m. JACCC is located in Little Tokyo at 244 South San Pedro Street. Go to JACCC.org for the cost of the classes, which also include two instructional books. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. The Port of L.A. takes part in a tradition believed to be thousands of years old, the christening of a ship. Brasha Goel not only emcee the special ceremony, she takes us up close for a look at APL Savannah. One, two, three. There you go. Congratulations, APL and APL Savannah. This was the first time ever a ship was christened at the Port of Los Angeles, and I had the pleasure of emceeing the historic event. APL, a global transportation and logistics company that works out of the port, welcomed the latest addition to its global fleet with the naming of this 9200 TEU, or 20-foot equivalent unit, container ship, named the APL Savannah. When you look at the uh, 
amount of freight that this will carry. This is one of the biggest ships ever constructed in the history of humanity. But more importantly, it represents jobs. Each one of those containers that's here offloaded is headed someplace in the United States of America. This is truly America's port. According to tradition, the christening was done with the breaking of a champagne bottle on the fleet. Port of LA Executive Director Geraldine Natt says the addition of APL Savannah to the port is a winning situation for the City of Angels. It means jobs, 3,500 construction jobs. It also means that with the investment the port's going to do, about 8,000 permanent jobs. So every time a steamship line like APL brings in a new ship like this, it means business for Los Angeles. APL Savannah is the largest vessel in the APL fleet to traverse the Trans-Pacific trade route between Asia and the U.S. What's more, this vessel is designed for greater operational efficiency and is more environmentally sustainable. Not only will our new building, new builds reduce operating costs, they will also reduce fuel consumption and emissions. The mayor and other dignitaries had the opportunity to not only tour the vessel, but they also got to sound the whistle. to a new beginning. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Jeannie Lavers, Director of International Transportation for Kohl's Department Stores, served as godmother for the APL Savannah and led the christening of the ship. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you could catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. City View Channel 35. Your city, your channel.
Good morning. Uh, today is Tuesday, October 29th. I'd like to welcome you to your Los Angeles City Council. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. The uh, public is welcome. At this point in time, we do not have a quorum, but I think we can start with uh, today's presentation. Uh, Mr. Parks, are you ready to move forward? Okay, so at this time, we'd like to defer to Council Member Parks for a very important uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, today, we're gonna honor three organizations that put a lot of energy and time uh, for our armed forces uh, personnel and that they run organizations that not only house these personnel upon their return, but they also spend a lot of time on addressing the uh, prisoners of, of war and the MIAs that are still missing. I'd like to ask Blas Falobos to come up at this time, along with Ivan Mason, and also Jose Ramos, and then it's Mr. Wimberly, come on up here. Mr. Wimberly gets here from Jackie Robinson Post. We'll be able to also honor him. Uh, okay. Of the women and, uh, men and women who served our country in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and later conflict, there's currently over 83,000 whose fate and whereabouts remain unknown. Some of these are prisoners of war, who were taken captive by enemy forces and never returned to us. Others are missing in action, a term defined under the Missing Persons Act as applying to any member of the armed forces on active duty who became involuntarily absent as a result of hostile action and whose status is undetermined and who is unaccounted for. The observation of POW MIA Recognition Day began in 1979 to raise awareness of the large number of Americans that are still missing after the end of the hostilities in Southeast Asia. POW MIA Recognition Day is generally observed on the third Friday of, uh, in September. Today we retroactively honor our missing warriors for their service and sacrifice and rededicate ourselves to the cause of finding them while we applaud the ongoing effort of the Defense Prisoner of War Missing Person Personnel Office who has actually closed 36 new cases since the start of this year. Uh, the number of unaccounted for personnel includes 1,660 from the Vietnam era are still far too high. Today, joining us will be an organization that has done a wonderful job in our community, U.S. Vets. It's one of the nation's largest nonprofit providers of comprehensive services to the homeless and at-risk veterans. They're dedicated to successful transition of military veterans and their families. With 11 facilities in six states and the District of Columbia, U.S. Vets provide vital services such as case management, employment assistance, job placement, counseling, and as well as drug and alcohol-free housing for over 2,000 vets each day. In a year, U.S. Vets will have helped 3,000 veterans field housing and over a thousand veterans, veterans obtain full employment. And I'd like to uh, first acknowledge Blas Velasco and Ivan Mason. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Honorable Councilman, esteemed members of the council, Thank you for this honor coming in and you know recognizing U.S. vets for everything that we do. Um, it was definitely a surprise being summoned here today, but it was a pleasant surprise. So thank you, Honorable, you know, Bernard Parks. Okay. We'd also like, uh, are joined today by uh, Jose Ramos, who is the founder of the Vietnam Veterans, uh, uh, Veterans Day organization, 
or Welcome Home Veterans uh, Organization. Uh, he started in 1998 by bringing attention to this issue by taking a 16-day, 1,250-mile bicycle ride uh, through Vietnam, which was organized by the World Team Sports. The documentary Vietnam Long Time Coming won an Emmy and the Directors Guild Award. In 2000, Rommel's campaign for the Welcome Home organization began in a grassroots effort. He began to share the idea of Welcome Home to Vietnam veterans. Uh, to raise awareness, he decided to ride his bicycle from his home in Whittier to Washington, D.C. to ask the White House administration to proclaim March 30 as a National Welcome Home Vietnam Veteran Day. On September 25, 2009, Governor Schwarzenegger joined Assemblyman Paul Cook and the Veterans uh, Welcome Home Veterans Organization founded by Mr. Ramos and signed AB 717, the Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day Bill at 29 Palms Base. And so we'd like to ask Mr. Ramos to come at this time. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor, Councilman, uh, for having us here, uh, for recognizing the, VO, the POWMIA uh, problem that we have in the country. I, I think that for, for me, the most important thing is welcoming home the Vietnam veterans was something that America wanted to do and needed to do. They just didn't know how to do it. And, and I'm very pleased that I opened the door and that now it's a national movement. Uh, when it comes to the POWMIA thing, I, I would like to remind everyone that POWs, prisoner of wars, also exist here in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, when you drive down the city of Los Angeles, you'll see a lot of homeless veterans. I think that homeless and veterans are two words that don't go together. Uh, there, there should be probably something that we could do to pull together and make sure that if we can't save everyone, we should at least take care of our veterans and get them off the street where they belong. Thank you very much for, your, for having us. Thank you. And then finally, although, uh, and this post is in the 8th District, we wanted to honor also the Jackie Robinson Post 252 is comprised of over 600 members in the greater Los Angeles area as well as over the United States. They are part of the largest patriotic women's organization in the world, and their mission is to help veterans, their families, and children in the community through their growing membership and fundraising. Uh, Mr. Wimberly uh, had some car trouble, so he should be here uh, uh, shortly, but I'd like to honor these veterans on, and really retroactively on uh, recognition on PO, POW and uh, MIA Day. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, but Mr. Parks, before uh, the veterans uh, leave, what I'd like to do, we have a quorum. Brother Mason, Mason, before you leave, maybe I could ask, uh, uh, based on a suggestion by Mr. Kokorian, that we be led in our flag salute by the uh, the veteran organizations and the one so if you guys could go and city attorney and uh, city clerk if you could uh, let us work through this and then we'll go to the agenda but since we have individuals that have done all, all of this fine work I think we do it and uh, it will be a pleasure and an honor for us to join Okay, let me call, uh, have the clerk call the roll. Would you call the roll? Blumenfeld, Bana, Buscano, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizard, Caress, Gregorian, LaBanche, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, Wesson, Timmer, President O'Corn, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mason, if you get in the mic and lead us. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And Mr. Kokorian, Mr. Kokorian, excellent and respectful idea. Thank you for sharing that. Let's uh, uh, begin uh, today's uh, session. What's the first order of business? Madam Clerk. Approval of the minutes. Martinez moves, corrects, seconds. 
Ministry of Resolutions for approval. Buizar moves. Uh, Buscaino seconds. Next. Mr. President, um, item one is an item notice for public hearing. There are cards on this item. Let's hold that item and let's move on and go through the agenda. Items two through 16 are items which public hearings have been held. Okay, uh, specials members, I don't see Mr. Buscaino. 15, please. 15 for Mr. Buscaino, 16 for Mr. Lavange. Let's uh, prepare to vote on the remaining items. You good, Mr. Kerkorian? Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay. And, and yes. Mr. President, the ordinances on items two and three will be held over for second reading one week. Oh, and they definitely will be because we're at ten, and that's all. That's as high as we're going to get today. So, where, are, where what's our next uh, section on the agenda? Items 17 through 24, items which public hearings have not been held. Ten okay. votes required for consideration. Okay. So, without objection, those items are now before this body. Do we have cards? Cards on items 17. 19, 20, 21, and 24. Johnson, could you go, there's a card. Mr. Herman, did you want to turn in a card? What item is that? I couldn't hear. 16. Okay, members on the remainder, do we have any He's turning in a card for 16. 16. Oh, okay. okay so. it, members, any other? Relax, Donna. We'll get you in. Okay, no more uh, requests from members. Let's... Paul? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just uh, by way of information on item number 20, I'm circulating a substitute motion with some technical changes. Okay, so we'll hold that. Let us know when that... That language has been uh, circulated. Okay, let's prepare uh, Madam Clerk to vote on the remaining items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, where does that bring us now? I don't, on, the, on the supplemental agenda, item 25 is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay. Uh, and there are cards on this item. Okay, without objection, that item is now before us, and we'll hold uh, that item. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, let's begin going through uh, the uh, items that were held. We'll start, Mr. Walsh, we're going to start with item one. So, uh, it held special by Mr. John Walsh. If you would please come forward, sir. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or at J. Walsh Confidential. And uh, for the record, the meeting began to minutes late with only 10 stay minutes on the, here. Stay on the subject. That's for the record. No, stay on the subject. Already heckling me, huh? Because I'm a Jew. Anyway, uh, hearing appeal against confirmation of assessment for improvement under 1911 Act of the Warbler Way near Doheny Drive. This is called Birdland, that neighborhood. This is sewer improvement, mainline sanitary sewers. Uh, you do a good job on sewers. <laughs> Go to some other cities. Notice I don't get interrupted when, I, when I'm uh, praising you. Uh, you do a good job on sewers. Go to uh, some other cities, big cities, and, and realize sewer hell. Uh, John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Okay, let's uh, prepare to vote on this item. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, let's go to item uh, 17. Do we have our commissioner here? Or Mr. Uh, Walsh, you've held item 17. In fact, sir, why don't you wait to public comment and I'll have you come forward. This is on uh, item 17, held special by uh, Mr. Walsh. Yes, sir. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. 
This concerns taxi cabs. I'm one of the few people who can get into a taxi cab and speak African language to the driver. And if, he's, if the driver is black, he's probably Ethiopian. Okay. Uh, anyway, city ethics commission, or this uh, taxi cab commissioners. Okay. We're 100% in favor of this person. We have one question just to get it out of the way. We not, we're not uh, attacking them or, but how, do you possess kitty porn? The reason we're asking that question is you voted 15 to nothing a couple of years ago and the kitty porn stash of Vera Gosa's appointment showed up and I believe he's, uh, he's now in, in prison, isn't he? But I'm sure you're doing a good, uh, you'll do a good job. As I mentioned before, uh, my father was a cab driver for 25 years in New York. Just when I talk like this, you know, when I first came to L.A. Uh, HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you. If I could get the uh, commissioner to come forward, the commissioner to be. Sir, if you'd state your name and tell us a little bit about yourself. Good morning. My name is Mompre Pomakian, and um, I live in uh, um, Councilman Labanja's uh, uh, district. And uh, this will be my second consideration for the Taxi Cab Commission. I was previously uh, nominated and served on the commission uh, for one year, from June of last year to July of this year. And uh, I'm certainly open to answering any questions. Okay, uh, there are no, uh, Mr. LeBond's requests an I vote. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, our uh, next item is item 19, uh, held special by Mr. Walsh and Mr. Herman. If you please come forward on item 19. John Walsh, blogging at Hollywood Highlands, H -A -G -H -L -A -N -D -S org. This is our old friend Reap. And here we have, how many, how many bad landlords do we find here? These are landlords who refuse to make, uh, to bring their uh, buildings up to code and the people, the renters, are smart enough to know, and I'm saying this to everyone out here, to go to the city, and the city stops, starts collecting your rent rather than the landlord collecting your rent. And you should see how fast they start uh, uh, paying, uh, uh, fixing your apartment up when uh, th they're not getting a rent. One, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, this again. Notice I'm never stopped when I'm praising them. Only when I'm, uh, uh, it, all praise is on the subject. All criticism is off the subject. Now, these are five issues and 100% uh, uh, in favor, hollywoodhighlands.org. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's, oh, oh no, 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 I'm sorry, Mr. Herman, come on. <laughs> Mr. Herman. Good morning, Los Angeles. And those of you in Boyle Heights, we're all aware of the liens, the foreclosures, and as Hollywood Highland John Wall's statement said, dot org, don't forget, confidential. It's very true that there are many who are uh, illegally evicted by the negligence of our city's uh, building and safety. Such enforcement is a negative attention getter, I hope, to many of you who are taxpayers, because many of you pay for this. Mr. Weezar is well aware of it. And so, again, when does the city take the comprehensive approach of taking away the, the negative impact of how these um, actions by building and safety, that within the housing enforcement, for the record, for the record, these illegal actions need to be investigated by the state, by the federal government, because you're taking actions against a population of people that are disabled, people that are elderly, people that have been living in their homes for more than 10 to 20 years, 
And you want to grow Los Angeles? Mr. President, I don't believe he's talking about the REAP program. Get back to the subject, uh, Mr. Herman. To the issue on escrow, right? And how it affects your taxes. So, city attorney, stop taxing the people of Los Angeles and give them a right to live here. Thank you, Dion. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, now we'll move to item, what did you say, Mr. At the request of 15. Yeah. I don't. Okay, we'll move to item 15, Mr. Buscaino. Uh, it's my understanding we don't have any cars. No cars. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, as you know, ports across the country are critical infrastructure that are vital links to uh, the global economy. And they also provide tens of thousands of jobs and move hundreds of tons of goods to and from our local markets. Uh, the strategic importance of these ports uh, make them sensitive targets uh, for security threats. The cost in lives and dollars is too staggering to allow gaps in security of any kind of size uh, to be tolerated. I commend uh, Congresswoman Janice Hahn, my predecessor in this office, and also no stranger to how important port security is, for taking the initiative to ask for a comprehensive study on port security issues uh, with the intent of identifying any lapses that might exist, pri prioritizing them and offering solutions to correct any deficiencies they may find. And there's, uh, as we all know, there's much disagreement today in Washington, D.C., uh, to find some common ground. And it's my sincerest hope that, um, at the very least, um, our uh, Congress members um, and the entire body in D.C. can all agree that port security cannot be taken lightly. Uh, I extend my support for this legislation and uh, send this, um, hopefully you do the same, and once approved, we send this forth with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Let's prepare to uh, vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, now we'll move forthwith. Now we'll move to item 24, which was held special by Mr. Walsh. Item 24. They're not going to show you my face. Always the long shot for uh, uh, white boys. Anyway, uh, number 24, this is Labonge and Krikorian. This is $15,000 for irrigation improvements on the median strip along Hollywood Avenue from Melrose to Wilshire. We're always in favor of something that is east of La Brea. As you know, we're the only city where minorities and poor people and hippies Mr. and everything. Mr. President, That's he is not East talking about Mr. this Mr. Walsh, connect with the item. I am talking about the where the irrigation ditch will be. That is what I said. No, watch your You don't have to scream and, scream and holler. No, 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 no. Don't scream. Okay, Mr. Walsh, just down a little. No, 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 now you're off, now you're off the subject. He appears to be disrupting the meeting with his loud volume. Okay, now, uh, sergeants, we, no, we're, no, you're just hollering and screaming. Come on, John, uh, help him find his seat. All right, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's, let's, uh, no, no, no. No, 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 no let, let's stop, please, what, Mi and let the Mr. disruption. Mr. City Attorney. The, the, he is still disrupting the meeting. He's done speaking, and he's still disrupting the meeting, Mr. President. So what do you recommend we do? Mr. Walsh, just nobody's going to arrest you. Just go sit down. No, ja no, Mr. Labonge, no, we run this place. I'm addressing the issue, Mr. Okay, we're going we're gonna to sit him down. Mr. Labonge, you want to speak on the issue? Mr. Walsh. Highland Avenue runs from Wilshire Boulevard through Melrose is a historic monument. Several locations, the water features are busted 
from the meter heads, and this provides funding to correct that. And it's a very simple thing, and Mr. Walsh, with his excitement, got overexcited. I call for an aye vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Okay, let's prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, now we're going to move to item 25. And that's held special by cards. I have Donna Pierman. I have Sean Murphy. I saw there yeah, see him. And I have Mr. Herman. So Donna, if you could please come forward. Sean, whoever gets there first. Come on. Let's go, Donna. I called you first. Get get to the mic. Okay, this is over on the, uh, okay, um, yeah. Again, we have trouble with eminent domain. This is on number 20, right? And the uh, Bally this Plaza. 20, this is 25, Dada. 25, I didn't put it in front yeah. of 25. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is about being in the valley, sorry. This shows that they don't care about uh, really coming to the valley it's, it now shows only six times, of course, that's every other month, but it shows in clear black and white that they don't, uh, that they'll come to the valley only every other month. And that's not really access to people in the, uh, the valley. Now that we don't have video conferencing, it makes it very difficult and people only coming every other month. Mr. Corian thinks that uh, that's easy access to the valley, but that's not very many times to have only to come six months, every, uh, I mean six times in a, sorry, six times in a year, yeah. every other month. So that uh, if you're not available for that one time, then you have to wait for four months. So it shows you that uh, they don't care about hearing people from the valley and the reason why they don't come up with video conferencing because they really don't want to hear people in the valley because we have things to say. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we have things to say and I know that the uh, city council members would love it actually if nobody came and then you could just have a meeting totally by yourself and just talk to yourselves and come up with uh, what you like to do and we would love it if the public never came only because of the Brown Act you have to. Thank you, uh, Donna. If we could have uh, Mr. Murphy. Yeah, the Valley should, you should have the video conferencing back every month instead of every other month. And one more thing. When it rains so damn hard in L.A., the streets are flooded. It's hard for me to get down here. Mr. Herman, please come forward. There are many great challenges today in our society, and one in particular is the video conferencing. I believe Van Nuys needs to be open to the public. It's a public interest for it. There's public need to comment in that area of Van Nuys, and I want to attend out to Van Nuys, as I may, as any person here, whether we're elderly, disabled. So we're reaching out to you, Los Angeles, as I came from John Perez's office, assemblyman, this morning, and said to him, why can't the speakers be heard at city council? We're not the best speakers. We're not the most introduced speakers, but yes, we are gadflies in interest of what public wants, public interest. And when we have Michael Englander unavailable, it only shows and says that, were you representing your, your, Mr. your constituency? Mr. not talking about Mr. this. Mr. Herman, item. on the subject. I'm going there. It just is dumbfounding when the interruptions come in 
when you're taking out of thought and process. Just stay on the subject. I'm saying it nicely. On the and subject. And so, without argument, I say to you all in Los Angeles, let's do something about our video conference in Van Nuys. We must bring it back. We must give the residents in the valley the same attention you get here in Los Angeles as much as I get here. Thank you. Hold my time. Thank you. Let's uh, prepare to uh, vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. All right, so now we're going to move Mr. LeMans to item 16. And it's my understanding that uh, there are two cards on that. I'd like to call forward. I don't see him. Doug? Right oh, yeah, there he is. Arsenal, please come forward and uh, a constituent. I believe to be Mr. Herman. Doug, good morning. Good morning, council members. I'm Doug Arson of the Valley Industry and Commerce Association, VICA, representing businesses that employ more than 100,000 Los Angeles commuters. VICA strongly supports council member Labonja's motion to support or sponsor legislation to repeal the so-called Robbins Bill, SB 211 of 1991, which prohibits above, above ground rail along the Orange Line, the Valley's only metro line. Uh, SB 211 is a thorn in the side of all Valley commuters. Until the Robbins Bill was passed, light rail transit was the clear top choice for MTA and Valley residents. It was and still is the most economically efficient option with significantly higher potential ridership. However, due to the prohibition on rail, MTA constructed the BRT system that currently operates as the Orange Line. Unfortunately, the Valley has outgrown this system. MTA originally estimated a ridership of about 16,000 weekday riders. As of last year, and it's increased since then, average ridership is more than double that at 31,787. In fact, I took the orange line this morning here. I had to wait for two buses to pass because they were too overcrowded. This is a commonality, as many of you know. Uh, the Valley has, been a, has not been able to abate this problem of overcrowding or even study the feasibility of a rail system while the Robbins Bill is in, in place. We understand that the complete transformation of the Orange Line is not going to happen overnight, but this motion is a great step. Once approved, we hope that our representatives of the Valley, Laban, um, Council Members Labonge, Krikorian, Martinez, um, will help us to encourage the mayor to take appropriate steps in Sacramento despite the current lack of an, a permanent office. Thank you for your support. This issue is a top priority for our members along with thousands of Valley residents and businesses that utilize our currently restricted metro system. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doug. Good to see you, Mr. Constituent, or Constituent as it says. Mr. Herman, Mr. Herman. Going back on item 16, which prohibits a light rail line from the North Hollywood to the Hayes Line Avenue. But the question is here. Look at the mistake of a trolley through downtown Los Angeles costing you, the taxpayers, and you, the government. Yes, you, the government, a grant. Additional money to pay for the mistake, the waste, inefficiencies, oversight by Jose Huizar, who's not here today, for the record. And going back on to this resolution, the state legislative of any legislative which would repeal public utility codes for this section, this item? How many, tra how many of you use trans uh, transportation today, whether it's public? You don't. You use our taxpaying vehicles. Get on a train, get on a bus, and see what the wait times are. A trolley won't make it any better, nor thank a light you. rail. Thank you, thank you, and Mr. Weezar is present today. All right, let's move on. Let's prepare to vote. Mr. Labonge. Members, thank you very much. This is opportunity for the future. Uh, Ms. Martinez, Ms. Fuentes, Mr. Kokorin, Mr. Koretz. Sometime in the future, there could be an opportunity to transform what was a rail line, the old Pacific Fruit Express, Southern Pacific, went dead. And then at the time, there was a vision that was the wrong vision that the state passed that law on by Senator Robbins. So I call for an I vote that gives us the vision clear in the future for the opportunity so Sean Murphy can get down here for public comment easier. Thank you very much. Mr. Kokorian. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to thank Mr. Labonge for uh, bringing this matter before us. This, uh, 
Uh, it, it's, it's extremely important that we review the possibility of uh, constructing a light rail line to replace the current bus line uh, on the Orange Line. This has been one of the great successes in Los Angeles uh, transportation investment, the Orange Line. It, it is um, used to the point, as Mr. Arsenault said, that it's almost impossible to get on a bus because it's so widely used. And it puts the lie uh, to the assumption that many make that San Fernando Valley residents are not interested in, in public transportation. They very much are. A light rail line affords the potential opportunity to significantly increase the capacity of ridership along the Orange Line and have greater connectivity to the Red Line and the rest of the, the system throughout the uh, city of Los Angeles and the MTA system. So uh, I ask for your I vote on this. Uh, this is an unfortunate piece of legislation, another one of those instances where somebody, in this case Senator Allen Robbins, who at the time was trying to protect some of the neighborhoods in the area from the potential disruption that would come from surface transit. Well, we've seen now that surface transit is there, it's working extremely well, and the, the neighborhoods have been able to uh, be accommodated, so we should at least have the local opportunity to look at whether or not a light rail system or other options uh, are more appropriate on that orange, uh, orange line right-of-way. Uh, so I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Kokorian. Okay, let's prepare uh, to vote. On this item, let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, now, uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to go to item 21. No speakers. Well, Mr. Walsh is out of time. If we could uh, prepare to vote on that item, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, uh, we're going to move to item 20. Uh, Mr. Kokorian, it's my understanding that the uh, amending language has been circulated, but I will defer to, to you. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. There's a substitute motion that's uh, before members. It's simply uh, added slightly to the scope of the review that staff is being asked to do in examining whether or not eminent domain and other options uh, might be appropriate for the Valley Plaza. Uh, project. Um, it's a slight change. I ask for your I vote. Okay, so now uh, the clerk has just indicated to me that we have to take two votes. If you'd lead us through this, Madam Clerk, what are we voting on now? Oh, no, you know what? Let me call the cards. Okay, Mr. Walsh is out of town. time. Uh, that leaves us with Miss Pierman. Donna, if you could please come forward. Yeah, thank you. I uh, thank you. I love to know what they plan to do from Val Valley Plaza because I don't know exactly uh, all the things they plan for Valley Plaza. But I don't like the idea of eminent domain. I like to know who is it that's uh, going to be leaving due to d eminent domain. Uh, I've seen. I know it all about eminent domain. I've seen that uh, the Orange Line take uh, businesses go away when the orange line went through so I don't like the idea of MM domain so it seems to me um, that uh, yeah it seems to me that uh, I'm sure you know Mr. Corrin doesn't seem to care about the valley so if anything that he I, I'm very weary on anything he comes up with Valley Plaza but I'm hoping that I kind have of a dream that uh, Valley Plaza will come up and be vibrant with a lot of good, a uh, lot of open businesses that people like to go to, a lot of places to eat. So I'm hoping that we'll have a good place over in Valley Plaza and then, but uh, not at the process of eminent domain. I don't want seeing someone to lose their business because of eminent domain. Thank you. Yeah. Bring back video conferencing. Okay, let's prepare to vote on that item. Let's open the roll. I assume, Mr. President, yes. just uh, for oh, the no, record. Oh, no, we have two votes on that. One, we have to uh, vote to accept the substitution or something to that effect, correct? Yes, uh, the first vote is on whether to substitute. Okay, so on that, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 
Ten ayes. Okay, now we actually vote on the item. Yes. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Okay, that brings us where? That takes council to general public comment. Okay. Mr. Murphy, you're still here. Mr. Walsh, uh, Doug, or did Doug leave? Arsenal. Yes, good okay, morning. Okay, so go ahead, Sean. We'll yes, go good, with you. Yes, good morning, Mr. President. Uh, we ne still need our streets paved. We need our sidewalks repaired. And I'm for the Valley Plaza as long as you don't build another school. I pray for Dr. Paul. He's still in the hospital. Uh, my old choir director, he got transferred to Valley Presbyterian Hospital in Van Nuys. I'm going to go see him after, after the meeting. Uh, we just need to make our streets better and everything. That, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Murphy. Uh, Mr. Walsh. John Walsh. Is that loud enough for you? Uh, let's start with, I, there was an issue here about the Highland Avenue median. I was talking about the location. Mr. Dion O'Connell is a virulent anti-Semite. I've heard things he said all the time. And let's face it, everybody, most of the so-called gadflies are Jews. We represent maybe 10% of the population. We represent about 90% of the gadflies. Now, over at the county, the, 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 their attorney does not interrupt if he has anything that he thinks, if he thinks I'm Mr. Dion O'Connell, virulent anti-Semite. You know, he had a full head of hair two years ago. Every time he interrupts me, one hair falls out of his head. He, take a look at him. He's almost bald now. And you can go after me all you want. I can go up to me and Mr. And I would like to address you by your given name, why you're upset and why you are, you would like to be a white man, President, so you don't like the name Herman. That's your name. That's your first name, Herman, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that just because white people laugh at people named Herman, okay? England is not here. Where is he? You only have 10 people here. Five are out. They're getting paid, the highest in the United States. You got garbage like Rick Orlov, self-hating Jew over there who doesn't mind as long as he gets his money. Of course, he's almost dead. The, and I'm telling you, the city attorney, he's, he's ruffling. I'm telling you right now, HollywoodHighlands.org, the tour bus operators that you're getting rid of, some of them are black businessmen. Do any of you know that there are black businessmen who have black tours of Hollywood, and while most of them are white, HollywoodHighlands.org, you are all garbage. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Order, Mr. Okay, President. come on. I have come, a point no. of order, Mr. Come President, on, please. now that Mr. Walsh's time has expired. Yes. I have a point of order. I know that in general public comment, the Brown Act, decisions of the court, the First Amendment, and other things require very broad latitude be allowed by this body in what members of the public are permitted to speak about. They are permitted to speak about anything that's within the jurisdiction of this city council. What, but that does not include personal attacks on people who have nothing whatsoever to do with this city council, including members of the media and others. They are not permitted to come to use that microphone and our television time and insult people who have nothing to do with this city council from that microphone. And I would like the city attorney and the president to recognize that conduct like that is disruptive of this meeting when they come and speak completely unrelated to any topic that has anything to do with the city council and particularly when it's personal attacks on somebody who's not part of this council who doesn't work for this council who doesn't work for the city it's outrageous and it's wrong thank you mr kokorian uh miss uh Dion, Dion, you and i should figure out how we proceed uh, Ms. Pierman, Donna Pierman, followed by Mr. Herman, and we will close this with Richard Robinson. Come on, Ms. Pierman. Yes. First, I want to make it clear to the public out there, I am speaking downtown. I am not in Van Nuys, because some people think I am. Um, the video conference, conferencing has not reopened. We need the video conference in Van Nuys and San Pedro. 
reopen. Mr. Kakorian said, who's blocking the video conferencing, thinks uh, that City Hall accessible to the valley. By the way, he feel, he just said that you had to be part of the city council to be able to, uh, he feels that the public who are not part of the city council really shouldn't be speaking their mind if it's uh, a little negative. Anyway, the, he feels that the city hall is accessible to people in the valley. Uh, and I guess he feels that that's accessible for a two or three hour ride is everybody easy to do. Luckily, I was able to get a seat on the uh, orange line, but the subway had a 20 minute delay. Uh, I saw one that was broken down, so it's not easy access. And I want to tell you, if you care about uh, money, you would, uh, I saw one on, uh, incident on Canby, on uh, Reseda. Um, near Reseda, sorry, near Atticoy and Valeria. There are 20 bomb squad, rescue squads, 10 close place policemen, 20, 10 to 20 large fire department trucks, 5 to 10 regular tri uh, fire trucks, 20 police cars, and all it was for one little guy in a building uh, with his holding his girlfriend hostage, uh, and he gave himself peacefully. Now that seems to me a lot of uh, a lot of our city money uh, was wasted on one little individual. That was just really overkill. I don't know who this one individual was that scared the heck out of these people to be able to have to spend so much of our money. Uh, so you don't ca uh, the city doesn't care about saving money. So easily they can come up with video conferencing. Let thank people you, thank you, thank you, Ms. Pierman. Uh, Mr. Herman, please come forward, followed by Richard Robinson. Federal ruling, August 7, 2013, Zuma Dog versus LA City Council to correct you, Mr. Kagorian. But you cannot sacrifice political speech to a formula. To a formula. Let's get it straight. This is America. LA fights plague of garbage, but for the record as well, the city attorney shouldn't be talking to the president while general public comment is being discussed. Thank you, Dion. In neighborhoods, discarded furniture, discarded rubbish, discarded debris. Where are you, Mr. Weezar? It sounds like we. But going back to this, Mr. Sadio, who's not here today, great job. Take a a million dollars to clean up the streets in your district. I wish Jose Weizar would have done the same for us. Instead, he decided to fund Alley Live. For what? The sacrifice was a marriage? Adultery? Adultery, Mr. Weizar, that's ridiculous. Over all this, you could have done more for our community. Boyle Heights, Lincoln Heights, Eagle Rock, and Los Angeles in particular, because that's my interest, is to see growth in a city, to bring back jobs, to see an economy develop, but rather not be interrupted by Mr. Congorian and his rude comments. Again, federal ruling, August 7, 2013, Superior Court. And in the future, when you disregard us, just remember time, the unhappy warrior. It's not Mr. Obama, it's you, local government, who has made a deficit. You who criticized the budget, but yet didn't follow the guidelines, the rules, the oversight. John Perez, here it is. The California state budget process, follow it. So that we, individuals with disabilities, we elderly, we the people of the city of Los thank Angeles. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Robinson, please come forward. Richard, come to the podium or you, before your time begins. Mr. President, members, the Daily Today trumpets the housing markets, rental units, dire straits. They are in need of repair nationwide. Sir Seleguera. Say it again. It's the war. 22 years of warfare since 1991. Desert Storm began that process 
every year spending about a trillion dollars for war. Iraq, now Afghanistan. The peace dividend will bring those monies that want to enable our president to engage the problem of infrastructure repair. The subprime crisis after the recession caused this situation so problematic for our nation's inner cities. The solution is at hand. As our president brings the troops home, as he promised, he will provide provide arms for the freedom fighters. We won't have any American boots on the ground. Any, and that's magnificent. God's on our side. We're sick of it. They're brothers fighting, their cousins fighting cousins. We should, <laughs> pardon me for preaching, but uh, this, this problem is St. Matthew 634, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow we'll worry about the things that were so. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, where does that bring us now? Council has motions for posting and referral. Okay, they are posted and referred. The desk An is clear. Announcements? No announcements. If we could have Mr. Buscaino for an announcement. Yes, um, colleagues, tomorrow as a reminder, the Joy Picus daycare facility will... Um, be through the halls tomorrow at City Hall, and the kids will be dressed in their costumes, so hopefully you'll have your candy ready to go. Um, and they will be here tomorrow, and we're going to um, host them in my office, and then we'll announce them tomorrow. Though little ones uh, walk and roam in the hall, so don't be alerted, but uh, they're from the Joy Picus Daycare Facility. Thank you for that reminder, Mr. Buscaino. Any other announcements? Members, if we could uh, please rise, have everyone in the council chambers rise. Eric, Martel, rise. Adjourning motions. I'll first look to Mr. Fuente's side, Mr. Buscaino. Thank you. Um, colleagues, I ask that we adjourn today's meeting in memory of Mrs. Emily Mason Ware, who passed away on October 25th at the age of 97. She was born June 26, 1916 in Alabama and came with her family to California in 1925, settling in El Centro, California. In uh, 1936, she moved to Los Angeles where she began her life's ventures as a student, a wife, mother, and working woman. She married Raymond Ware and became the proud mother of three children, Emily, Claudia, and Sylvia. She, was, uh, she also fostered numerous children who uh, she affectionately referred to as her Sears and Robux, Robux kids. Uh, she began her working career as a file clerk in 1945 with Los Angeles County and progressed through the ranks uh, to become a deputy sheriff of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. She was a second black woman to be hired as a deputy and the first black woman to work in transportation. She resigned in 1956 in order to spend more time at home and to begin her college education. She obtained a degree in education, became a teacher in 1961. During her career, she served as chairman of the Jordan High School Advisory Committee and was active in the Parent-Teacher Association of several schools. Uh, she retired from Los Angeles Unified School District in 1982 after teaching for 21 years. God bless her. Mrs. Emily Ware was a woman who took her service to community seriously. She. Uh, Excuse me, for, for more than 25 years, she was a volunteer for the Foundation of the Junior Blind. Uh, she was an active member of Project Jordan, which is a nonprofit organization formed in 1963 to support the academic endeavors of Jordan High School students. Uh, she was also an active volunteer in the American Cancer Society, the NAACP, the Watts Coordinating Council, and many other organizations uh, to which she generously gave her time. Mrs. Ware uh, was also a devout member of Grant AME Church. Uh, she was a Sunday school teacher and a member of the Layman's Organization and Mother's Club. Services are pending. Um, what a true pillar and champion of the community, Miss Emily Ware. May she rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. You know, now we'll look over to Mr. Koretz's side. Members adjourning motions. Okay, seeing none, this council meeting is adjourned.